Can you guys hear me? Hey, give me just a Can you guys hear me? Hey, give me just a thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, cool, Kim. Give everybody just a minute, and um, then we're going to get started. Man, so we got a lot of people coming on today. Got a lot of people coming on today. Guys, I thank you guys for being here. I got some exciting things we're going to talk about. You know, um, in the past, uh, I'm assuming everybody here knows who I am and kind of knows how we got here. So I'm not going to really worry about going into that. Um, as you guys know, I've trained and I've coached a lot of real estate agents over time. And one of the things in the past that we we've, we've talked about is we've talked about um, you getting more listings, right? A lot of my coaching and training has been really, really geared around getting more listings. And, um, and hey, Dennis, how are you? So um, anyway, nothing's really changed with that because I, I have this belief that if we can go out there and we can get we can have 50 buyers that are all qualified today and there's no way we can show them all property however we can have 50 sellers and all those properties can get shown today while we're sitting home in our pajamas and while we're just hanging out right and that's one of the things that i've always thought was was great about this business that we have this tremendous way to leverage ourselves without really working hard. And if you go out there and you decide, hey, I'm going to be a listing agent versus being just a strictly buyer's agent, right? Then there's all this stuff you can do. You control your schedule, you control your income, you can control everything, really. So I know that some of you guys registered for this because I told you I was going to tell you some leads. So let's go ahead and get this whole bonus lead source out of the way real quick here in the first couple of minutes. Okay, guys, so I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing. Okay, I've been watching all the Airbnb stuff. Airbnb um, revenues are down, like way down. They're like down 45% just Myrtle Beach, right? But there's almost four times as many properties on Airbnb right now in Myrtle Beach or in Horry County where Myrtle Beach is than there is on MLS. And it's really amazing, but this is not local just to my my um, market, this is all over the country that this is happening, which is really quite interesting because um, it means there's potentially a lot of, there is a lot of shadow inventory out there and there is a lot of inventory out there that, um, that maybe there's a lot of inventory out there that maybe we don't really know about, you know? And, um, and anyway, guys, 
so I think if we can figure out a way to target Airbnb, I think that'd be a tremendous source of listings for your business. That's number one. Number two is guys, eviction notices. You know what? I mentioned this. You guys know I've worked a lot with Red X in the past. Um, I still work with them a lot with training agents and helping them figure out how to make agents really make more money with their services and stuff. One of the things that I brought up to them, I brought up to several lead source companies is eviction notices, right? How can we go out there and get the information to contact that property owner that's evicting that tenant, right? Because I'll tell you what, after COVID, after eviction moratoriums, after only God knows what, man, and then if the economy goes the way that a lot of people think it will, then we're going to see rental rates decreasing, right? But there's a lot of landlords, man, out there that are just tired landlords, right? And if we can figure out how to contact those, I mean, really, we could hire a, a title company and just go straight to there, do all the research and stuff ourselves. I do not know anyone that is actually selling this as a lead source, right? And I think it would be a tremendous lead source to actually have. So guys, this business, this business is not hard. So, so really, honestly, man, it's pretty simple. You're either talking to one, one or another, you're either talking to buyers or you're talking about the sellers, right? And this is really how all of our businesses should look. It should look like this funnel here. Leads go into the top. We hopefully we call those leads where, and, and I know this, <laughs> this webinar is about not calling your leads and not making more phone calls, right? But we're all spending money on leads and you know what? It doesn't matter what we do. The most effective contact is that phone conversation with them, right? We can get through a lot of stuff and a lot of pre-qualification stuff really quick if we could have literally a three minute phone conversation with them, right? But even with that, guys, a lot of you are subscribing to services like Red X, where you're getting expired, you're getting for sale by owner data, you're getting for rent by owner owner data. You're, a lot of you guys are subscribing to Zillow or Realtor.com and things like that. And we're going to go through that in a minute. I'm going to tell you how to convert more of them. This is this is um, a webinar that's a little different than what we um, we talked about in the past. But either way, this is how your business looks. It's like a funnel. That first level is you sifting through the leads, right? Sifting through the leads, figuring out who's real, who's not real, and then you converting through a follow-up plan. Whether it's listings, whether it's sellers, buyers, it doesn't matter. We dump the leads in the top and we work them through and what comes out the bottom is what we technically get paid on, right? So easy stuff. So when you got a funnel like this, what do I think you should be putting in it? Okay, now this is this is my personal opinion. Some of you guys might disagree that I um, haven't been in business long, but I think this is what we should be putting into our funnel. This is what we should be spending our the most of our time on and really I think it's pretty much in this order too. Number one, what should go into our funnel is high probability leads, right? These are the people, these are the sellers that we know are going to sell. Okay. These are your for sale owners. These are your expires, right? And agents that aren't calling expires, I know that some of your markets don't have them and agents that aren't working your expires, I know that some of your markets do not have many expires, but I'm going to tell you this right now. This is a lead source that we have more information on than any other lead source possible. I mean, literally, we have everything that you could possibly have. You know, we have all the data of the house. We got pictures of the house. We have literally everything that you can possibly think of about that property. We literally have it and we have access to it. Expired, and that's expires. So I don't understand why agents will chase after a lead that registered on a, on a website with a fake name. They will chase after that lead harder than they will chase after expired leads. It doesn't make sense to me, right? The next, the next one is for sale owners, okay? For sale owners, we know they want to sell their house, and we know because a lot of them are act actively going out there marketing themselves, whether they're on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, one of these other classified sites, whether it's you riding by and seeing a red and white sign in the front they got from Home Depot yesterday, they're literally raising their hand and saying, hey, I want to sell my house, right? Okay, and then other leads, other leads would literally be people that we, we take and we know they want to sell the house. 
So I don't understand a lot of times why agents are not are not going after these lead sources and why are they are not um, actively pursuing them because they're literally raising their hand saying they want to do business. So it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. Um, Hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better. <laughs> so um, the second, second one is fear of influence and past clients, right? These are your friends, your family, and I understand, man, I got some family I don't want to work with either. But, you know, these are your friends and family. Hopefully, some of them, some of them are hopefully your biggest fans. Um, past clients, hopefully some of those are your biggest fans, right? A lot of people don't, don't get it that, you know, these people, not only are they, are they leads, not only are they somebody that might buy something from you, but there's somebody that already knows you already knows your work ethic, already knows that you sell real estate. They have a relationship with you at some point. And maybe they're not going to buy a house from you, but um, maybe uh, somebody they know will, right? I've told this story a bunch of times. Um, the sphere of influence, man, I worked with a couple that owned a little country store. Store didn't even sell gas, done breakfast, lunch, and they had, you know, little groceries, country store thing, right? Man, these people, I swear, they send me two, three, four deals a year. And they did that for years. I probably sold 20 homes um, that came from these people over the years. And, I mean, some of them were $50,000 houses, but some of them were $250,000 houses, right? These people literally were a source of business for me, literally, until they sold that store. And these people, if you met them, they were just, they were good old people. They didn't really have a ton of money. They both worked the store themselves. I mean, but a tremendous, tremendous uh, lead source. And a lot of us forget these. We don't work our sphere of influence. We don't work our past clients. We don't ask the sphere of influence referrals. We don't ask our, our past clients for referral. And it's sad that we don't because some of us could be doing those few extra deals that we need a year, right? Some of you guys at sphere of influence and past clients could be what you need to get you above what your goals are. Number three is buyer leads. Right. And other and number four, other leads you're purchasing. So um a lot of us we are taking the buyer leads, we're dumping them into um dumping them into some fancy website with a nice back end that emails them based on their searches and all that stuff. And that's all we're doing for them nowadays, right? And we're hoping somebody raises their hand, but we're not actually engaging them, we're not actually going after them. And we should be putting those in the funnel and we should be working them through just like any other lead, you know. So, so, but a lot of agents fail. You know, we've seen that statistic, 87% um, drop out after the first year. And we're seeing, we're seeing now NAR since the market's, uh, you know, I believe the market's slowing down. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of information out there that contradicts that. But, but the number one reason I feel like agents fail is, is they're just not consistent, right? And guys, I get it, man. I get it. There's a lot of stuff out there. A lot of a lot of shiny objects. There's a lot of toys. There's a lot of exciting stuff that sometimes is way more exciting than what we're probably doing, right? Um, you know what, man? Uh, I got some friends of mine that 110% believe in video. And guys, I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. Video is exciting, man. I don't really call TikTok a viable lead source, but I'm seeing agents doing business from it, right? Pretty much most things will work for you if you're consistently doing them, right? But most agents aren't consistent. You know, they get started, they subscribe to Red X, right? And I've seen this over the years. They subscribe to Red X and they message me and they say, Jason, I subscribe to Red X and it's just not really working for me. And I go, okay, well, that's, um, you know, what are you doing? And they said, well, I've called them. And you know what? If I ask you this, this is why I ask. I said, hey, man, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you give me your login and let me just take a look and make sure you got your filters and stuff set up. And really what I'm doing is logging in to see how many leads they open. And you'll see somebody, they've had it for two weeks. They got 75 leads in their in the um, Vortex CRM and they open three of them, right? But most of us, the reason why we're not doing better in the business, and the reason why we're not hitting our goals, reason why we're not making the money we want to make is because we're not consistent. So what do you do to be consistent, right? And I believe, and we're going to get through this real quick, um, I believe that we need to build a schedule. 
We need to have a schedule. And guys, I understand this better than anybody, especially um, nowadays. I have uh, I have a three year old and a six year old, and um, I have full custody of them. Man, their school schedules do not work with the working person, a working day, normal work schedule, right? And we all know this. We all know this, guys. So one thing that happens in my day, I'm going to tell you this, and I've learned this the hard way over the last year, year and a half. The number one thing you can do to get consistency and be productive during your day and get that consistency you need and hit your goals is to build a schedule, right? It is to build yourself a schedule. And I can tell you this without a doubt, if I wouldn't have put this webinar in my schedule, put time to work on these slides, put time to get this content um, together to make sure I present it to you guys in a, in a good way, if I would have put it in my schedule, it would not have happened, right? And to build a schedule, you guys can screenshot this. We're going to go down through it real quick. But to build a schedule, we need to, we need to put our non-negotiable life stuff. If you have to drop off the kids at 7, 15, 7, 30, um, guys, we need to put it in there. We can't be at the office at 7 if we got to drop them off at 7, 15, right? There's no way around. Okay. If you want to go to the gym, you need to put this in your schedule, right? But what's your non-negotiable life stuff? This is the stuff that don't change for you, you know? Uh, if your kid has a doctor's appointment, you need to put it in there. If they have soccer, if they have after school programs, if you have to pick them up at three, whatever it is, you need to put it in there. And I will tell you something beautiful about this. I'll tell you something beautiful about building a schedule is guess what my kids' school sent out? They sent out the full school year schedule. I know every day they're going to be out of school and everything, all for the brand new school year that starts in August, right? And we can literally take that, put that in your, put that in your your calendar, and then literally build your work schedule around it, right? So non-negotiable life stuff, non-negotiable business stuff, right? If you've got continuing education classes, you've got a coaching class. Dude, I see agents spend so much money on coaching and training material to never actually participate in it. It's really it's really a shame, and um. We have to put it in our schedule. If we're going to do it, we're going to have to put it in our schedule. Okay, the next thing that we have to do is we have to add prospecting. What do you guys think about this? Are you guys doing it? Raise your hand. Are you guys thinking you should do it? Raise your hand. Um, here, comment. If you're on Facebook watching this, comment. If you think that building a schedule like this would be productive, put your prospecting in your schedule. When are you going to do it? Me personally, I think to, to call those buyer leads, to call those seller leads, to call everybody, um, I think that we have to schedule a time to do it, right? And if I can tell you this, if I do not schedule a time to do something, if I just say, oh, I'll call them tomorrow, believe me, dude, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen, okay? We have to schedule a time for prospecting. I put in here when I've when I done this schedule for you guys today for this, I put a time for follow-up. Guys, we've already seen this, okay? We've seen this. Right here, follow-up is the biggest part of the funnel, right? It's the biggest part of the funnel. Why aren't we scheduling time to follow-up, guys? And you know what? Nobody really wants to talk about this because it's not really sexy, right? It's not exciting. It's not TikTok, right? But follow-up is the most important part of the sales process, right? That first call, that first contact, that first email, that first text message, whatever it is, they do not know who Jason Morris is. You guys on this call today, the reason why there's so many agents on this call today is because um, some of you guys have heard from me. Some of you guys have been following up me. Some of you guys have been literally, I've been a part of your lives or you've been a part of mine for literally years now, right? You guys know me, okay? You guys know me. So, um, I mean, that's, and that's how it is. But these sellers, they don't know you. You are a random person calling. So why don't we schedule our time for follow-up, right? Okay, next, paperwork, dude. I am the worst person at paperwork. I'll tell you that, that man, um, I had time scheduled this morning to do paperwork. And I struggle with it. I have to schedule time to do, handle my personal paperwork and handle personal things. Dude, I schedule time to pay bills. I schedule time to do all this stuff. Next thing. I always like to do when I'm prospecting, making sales. I go ahead and just put blocks of time in there when my appointments are going to be. 
right? Go ahead. If you're going to, if you want to do one appointment a day, you want to put two appointments a day, go ahead and block off a part of time. Then prospect, market, follow up with your people and all this stuff to fill up those appointment slots. If you have five appointment slots a week, you need to steady be going, how can I fill up all five? How can I fill up all five and add a sixth one, right? Now, marketing. You gotta put marketing in there, you gotta put appointments, and then everything else, right? If there's something else you wanna do, it goes in there. If you wanna do TikTok, if you wanna do video, you wanna do something else, you schedule it after your money-making activities, right? But guys, follow up. Okay, let's go through this graphic real quick. Okay, number one contact, number one, 50% 50 of people have given up. Now, I've, I stole this offline, but there's 100 people that have this exact same sort of thing. I found one that I thought would be best at, at this. I don't even know who to give it credit to, to be honest with you guys. There's somebody out there I owe credit to this. Um, but you look at this. The numbers are the same on most of these graphics. Contact number three, 79% of salespeople have given up. 79% which is crazy. By contact four, 89% of salespeople are giving up. So some of you guys are never making it to contact number four. And contact, we're talking about you left them a voicemail, you sent them a text message, um, you did that on Monday when the lead, lead come out, maybe you did it on Monday morning, then maybe Monday afternoon you followed up with them again, Tuesday you sent them another text message, and it doesn't have to be any crazy. A lot of you guys are trying to sell yourself in the text messages, you're trying to sell yourself in the emails, but we can't do that, right? The purpose is to establish contact, gauge motivation, and to set an appointment, whether it's a buyer, seller, whatever it is, right? Some of you guys are sending 10 pages worth of information that is not really relevant to what they're trying to do right now. Contact five, you're just becoming a, a factor in your prospect's mind. Six, nurturing slow, your prospect gets to know you. Um, seven, eight, nine. According to this, we got 13 contacts. So I'm going to share some information with you guys that, that I got from Red X. Um, this was a call that I had with them not long ago. They were talking about the number of contacts going up, right? And the number going up since COVID. Used to be, um, used to be eight, 10, 12 contacts for a high-end item in the sales industry was about normal to sell a high-end item, right? However, now we're, we're just bombarded with sales stuff. We're just bombarded with sales stuff. And it's, um, it's really quite crazy. So they're talking about that in some sales industries right now, being over 40 touches. Now a touch is, is an attempt to contact, right? Um, being over 40 touches. So how do we get there? And what do we do? And a lot of this stuff that we're talking about, gonna talk about next in the webinar is going to be how do we get to that 20, 30 touches? How do we get there where if four isn't enough? And I guarantee you guys this, this your market has become so tight over the last few years. Agents are not calling for sale owners. I guarantee you agents are not calling expires in your market. If you start picking up the phone and dialing, you'll probably be one of just a few actually consistently calling. If you consistently call, you'll be one of just a few, okay? So I know we said we're not going to make, talk about making calls on this, but that's still the most effective way, right? But if you're making a call, you're sending a text message, you have email access to them, which, which is an interesting thing because Red X's data now includes email addresses, right? In their mind, they're from a database, but sometimes you'll have an email address that's correct, but you won't have a phone number, right? So what do you do with that? And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. But we email, we text, we maybe we go, maybe we have an area picked out. We go door knock those expires that are coming up in that area, right? There's not a lot of them. So it's not like you're knocking on 100 doors a day. Maybe you're knocking on two. Maybe you're knocking on three, right? But nobody follows up. So, so the point of this is, the point of this part is, guys, Okay, if you take and build your system, you subscribe to a lead, and you build your system around follow-up, that is how you win in 2023. You make multiple touches and follow-up. And that's what we have to do to make sure that we hit our goals and stuff. So calling and talking to buyers, 
and sellers should be the foundation of your business, right? Picking up that phone, making those calls, trying to get those personal contacts in. And there's really not a lot of ways around that. That buyer that you've been emailing, that buyer that you've been texting with, at some point you got to pick up the phone, you got to have a conversation with them, you got to say, hey guys, you know what? To make your offer really stand out, we're still getting a lot of multiple offers right now. To make your offer stand out, what we need is a pre qualification letter. How are you going to pay for this? You know what? You wouldn't believe how many agents I see, even in today's market, that are going out there, they're working their butt off. Right, they are working their butt off, man. They're dragging buyers around. They spent a hundred dollars in gas showing buyers property, you know, in the last three days, right? And never asked them, hey, if we found something you really like, how are you going to pay for it? Have you already talked to a lender? So many times, and I hear it from lenders. Larry, me and Larry Lee talk often, and um, and we were just talking about this yesterday. He's got a buyer want to make an offer yesterday. However, the buyer wants to make an offer, but they don't have a pre-qualification letter. Why didn't that agent talk to him? A week before, Larry would have had him the pre-qualification letter, and hey, they'd have been making an offer. They wouldn't have been waiting around for that letter to come to make the offer, right? So we have to really, we have to really think about that and really plan ahead as much as possible, right? And um, yes, we're recording this, Sally, but um. And Rob, yeah, it is about making calls. So um, about not making calls. So there's not a lot of ways around that, but we can supplement those calls, and we can build a system that helps us work leads through our funnel, right? Think about this, guys. Let's just say now I believe that um, the more you're on the phone, the more you practice, the more you role play, the better you're going to be when you do get that opportunity to talk to them right we need to use scripts and we need to practice that but what if we took and built a system and we build it through automation what do you guys think about that automation we build a system that works for us or we build a system that maybe we're not the person that's picking up the phone every day right and I, I, I'm not a big believer in ISAs um, I haven't seen a lot of agents do that successfully where the ISA has in-depth conversations on the phone and sets the appointment. And the ISA, they love that person. That person's great on the phone. And then Jason Morris shows up that is not great on the phone, right? Or not, not the same person that they are meeting or that they've been talking to, that they've already built a relationship for. I haven't seen a lot of agents effectively be able to build that system and hand that off. Usually the agent's listing, so usually the agent doesn't have a listing system at all, right? So if you guys have been through some of my coaching and stuff in the past, you are you have a, a system to list your properties. You know what to do once you set an appointment. A lot of agents don't have that system and they don't have a system the ISA can plug into, right? But what we're talking about is what if you build a system that helps you work those leads through your funnel, right? They helped you with, maybe they helped you with contact. Maybe you can't get contact number one where you're actually talking to them on the phone. Maybe you can't get that contact. But this system does that contact for you. Now, you're out there calling them. You haven't had a chance to talk to them. But the system is going out there and you're making touches without you picking up the phone, right? So what can we do without making calls? Right? Number one, we can text, right? We can email. Okay. Um, email though, just like a lot of you guys are on here, you're on here because uh, you got an email from me. Um, but sometimes, you know what? People don't read their emails. Sometimes, you know, email isn't that important to them, but sometimes text messages aren't that important to them. Uh, but what if you sent text messages? What if you email? What if you did a voicemail drop, right? And this next one I think is, is actually something that is, is brilliant going on in the real estate world right now. And it is custom audiences on Facebook, right? So let's say you are making those calls, right? But then you're sending a text message too. Then you're sending an email. Then on the days you're not making calls and following up, you got a voicemail that drops, right? Then at the same time, 
you have your calling expires, you have that custom audience on Facebook that you've got them uploaded into that, and they're seeing they're seeing an ad or they're seeing a video that's you know Jason Morris talking about the the top five reasons homes don't sell in 2023, right? And then what if we paired that and we we went out there and we door knocked, um, knocked on the door. If they're not home, we we left something in the door, left a little marketing piece, left your card, left whatever it is. And then at the end, you know, guys, I have been negative on mail in the past, but I'm going to tell you this, man, year and a half, two years ago, my mailbox some days, I'd have five, I'd have five mail pieces. I get five, six mail pieces, seven mail pieces. And I actually live, I don't live in Myrtle Beach. I live south of Myrtle Beach in Follies Island. I live in a small community, right? But I get five, six, seven mail pieces a month from agents. Dude, nowadays, I'm not getting that. Dude, I haven't got a real estate marketing mail piece, and I don't know when, because agents aren't doing them anymore. Number one, stamps are high, but number two, a lot of these agents that were only doing mail, they just don't do anymore. Cost, it's out cost them. You know, you can't, it's tough to just do mail in today's market and survive, right? But what if you, what if you sent that expired? I mean, they're seeing you everywhere, right? They, they got a call from you. They got a text message, they got an email, they got a voicemail the next day, they got, they're logging into their Facebook and you got to, you've set it up with their phone number and with their email address so that you got a custom, you've got a custom audience ad going to them talking about why houses expire or talking about a house that expired that you relisted and sold it in three days, right? Um, then man, they get home from work and they got, they got some marketing piece or card stuck in the door from you, right? And then they go to the mailbox and they got something in the mail from you, right? So imagine this, imagine this. We go out here and we build a system like this. What do you guys think about this? You guys that are on this call, what do you guys think? Is this good stuff? Is this good stuff? Should we keep going here? Yep. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. So I'm um, keep going. I'll give you some. I'll give you some ideas here on what um what I believe that we should lead. Um. So imagine this with expired lead, right? Lead gets uploaded. Lead gets uploaded in your CRM immediately within a couple of minutes. Um, a text message goes out, right? Um. Then an email goes out, right? Then within a couple minutes, a voicemail gets dropped, in, right? And this is pre-recorded email, pre-set pre up text, pre-set up email, right? It isn't something that you're customizing necessarily for that specific person, right? It's just going out. You've already got three different ways they're seeing you. Okay, and then, then you're adding that, you're taking that either from your CRM, you're taking that CRM, and you're uploading to your Facebook custom audience and just updating that. Maybe you update it in the morning, right? It takes two or three minutes. Or maybe, you know, maybe you hire a VA to do it, right? There's several different ways you can go about that, but you upload it. And then, you know, when they're on their lunch break at work, they're scrolling through Facebook, right? And damn, they got a text message from you. They got an email from you. They got a voicemail from you. Then they got a Facebook ad say, talking about how homes expire and whatever it is. And then maybe that afternoon they get a live call from you, right? Guys, that's five attempts. That's five attempts. Have you guys seen anybody doing this in your market, right? Okay, and then let's just say, let's just say you're using something, you know, using a mailing service, you upload their address into that, right? And Reddix gives you all the data to be able to do this. Reddix gives you 100% of the data to be able to do this, right? Next day, something goes out in the mail to them. So in a couple of days, they got a mail piece from you. They got a postcard or whatever it is um, saying, hey, do you still want to sell your house? Or, hey, you know, three reasons stuff expires. You know, whatever it is. But they got a marketing piece in the mail from you, right? Okay, the next day, maybe the next day, something goes out in the mail. And then maybe, dude, maybe if you set it up and you're really disciplined, right? You're really consistent. Maybe you set it up. And you schedule it the next day where you ride by there, you knock on the door, right? You knock on the door, leave a marketing piece, 
later that afternoon, like five, six o'clock in the afternoon, a voicemail goes out and says, hey, Mr. Sell, hey, Mr. Seller, hey, this Jason Morris here just wanted to see if you got the uh, stop by your house earlier today. You went home. I really want to talk to you about, about the house you're trying to sell. Dude, what if you guys started doing stuff like that? Man? How powerful that be? They get home from work. They see the card stuck in the door or they see a marking piece stuck in the door. Then they got it a voicemail say like 536 that's that's from you saying hey i stopped by your house earlier i really want to talk to you about your house that was for sale right dude i think i think that i'd probably want to hire that agent or maybe you set it up so it goes out the next day right but day three you got another voicemail that drops day four you got a text message asking if they're still looking to sell their home Day five, you got an email about why most expired listings aren't selling. Or maybe you have a personal story. You guys that have personal stories, man, that aren't sharing them, dude, you guys should be. I mean, um, without a doubt, without a doubt. I got one a few years back. Dude, a girl called me. She's actually a friend of mine. Uh, she listed her house for sale with a different agent. It wasn't me. So on the market for three months expired. She calls me up and says, hey, my house has been on the market. I really need to sell it. we got another house we've already purchased. Can't really afford both mortgage payments. What do I do? So I start looking through MLS and um, looking at the pictures and stuff. And this is before I was going to go meet her. And I realized that, man, I'd been to her and her husband's house before. Um, I knew they had a two-car garage. I knew they had a sunroom. I'd sat in their sunroom before. But, guys, it wasn't on MLS, Right. The agent that had the house listed left off the garage. It, I mean, how crazy. So her house was really one of the best priced ones in the neighborhood, but nobody was really looking at it because every other one had a two-car garage except for hers, according to MLS. And you know, we took relist her house, added the information about the garage, added the information about the sunroom, which made her house a little bit unique compared to what was on the market. We sold it like a week later, right? You guys should be sharing those personal stories, okay? And the Facebook ads are a great place to do that, in, right? But day four, you're sending a text message. Day five, email. Day six, another voicemail drop. Day seven, I mean, this is only seven days, right? In the meantime, that Facebook ad is still running, so they're seeing this. And guys, with custom audiences, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get views. You can spend a few dollars a day, depending on that. Your audience is the, the minimum audience is 20 people. Well, let's count this up real quick. Okay, that first day, you get the text, you get one, two, three, four, five if you do the live call, six with something going in the mail, seven with a door knock, eight with a voicemail drop, nine on day four with a text message, day five, email, that's 10, day six, another voicemail drop, that's 11, day seven, another text message, that's Man, that's 11, 12 plus the Facebook ad. Guys, there's nobody in your market doing this. And the best part about it is you can set it up. It takes some work, but you guys can set it up, right? Okay, so, you know, so we could do that with our sphere, sphere of influence too, right? You know, yeah, man, I don't really want to... I really don't want to go to my, my grandma's having a birthday party this Saturday. Well, we got a surprise birthday party, but she didn't listen to this anyway. So, you know, um, but man, I really don't want to go to my grandma's birthday party, sit around and talk about real estate all the time with my cousins and family and stuff. You know, that's just not necessarily, um, my, um, my, uh, my thing to do. Right. So, but you know what, man? Facebook's a great place to connect with them, right? You got your cousin's phone number. You got your aunt's phone number. You Maybe you got their email address, right? You can run this custom audience and where you can share your reel. You can boost your reel to that custom audience, right? You can send out emails to them. You can send out a text message every so often. You can plan it. The text message, you know what, man? You wouldn't believe how powerful it is sometimes for these people just to hear from you where it just says, hey, happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day, Merry Christmas, you know, happy Thanksgiving, right? Um, that stuff is really powerful. 
then, then you can always do a voicemail drop to them too, right? That cousin, dude, I, I'm going to be honest with you, voicemail drops, dude, that is a lifesaver for me. There's so many people, man, that I deal with. I got some friends that do this too. And if they're listening to this, um, I guess my secret's out now. They're like, man, you know, I, I you called earlier and I got your voicemail, but I, I couldn't get you on the phone. Yeah, dude, I really didn't want to talk to you, to be honest with you. So what I did was I used that more phone and I did a voicemail drop. I don't tell them that, of course, but hey, man, just went to voicemail, you know, whatever. But guys, you know, we could seg literally segment this even smaller, right? A lot of us talk about working with investors, but we don't effectively work with them. And guys, I'm going to share a story about this, right? I got this friend, man, that uh, he's a real estate agent. He's got about 100, 125 people that have subscribed to this list over, over years and people he's worked with, people he's talked to, people have expressed interest in investing in real estate. Um, Myrtle Beach, every, every week he has an email go out. He searches, spends two or three hours on MLS looking for deals, looking for deals that make sense if they're rented, right? They're giving a good return on the money. And he sends out an email. Now, all he does is send out an email, and this guy consistently sells 20, 25 properties a year from this, like, deal of the week email, right? And um, I mentioned this to him, actually, a while back. We were just, we were just chatting. Um, and I said, hey, man, I said, you know, you ever thought about, like, texting people? And he's like, no, I don't want to text each one individually. Well, dude, you don't really have to text each one individually. You set up a mass text text you automate it and it's something like i mean maybe you send a deal through that text maybe you find something that's really good right you find a really good deal on the market or maybe you find for sale owners not on the market that's a really good deal but you you text it or you text going hey i want to see if you've seen the email i just sent out maybe you send a voicemail hey hey i wanted to give you a quick call i got a i got a really hot deal that's going on I got something that's really going on and I wanted to make sure you knew about it, right? Maybe your list is only 20 people. Maybe your list is only 10 people, right? Maybe do a Facebook ad doing the same thing, right? But buyer leads, guys, we do the same thing with buyer leads, right? And instead of like picking up the phone, calling them a hundred times, which I, I'm telling you, you still have to call. You still make those calls and you're going to be more effective, right? But we use this as supplement, the days that you can't make calls, the days that, you know, hey, you got a sick kid at home, the days that, you know, just stuff happens, the days that, you know, you have this system up and running, right? And you you can set this up in your CRM. You can set it up in your CRM, and it's not a big deal. And um, And it just works for you. And the same sort of stuff that we have going on here, same stuff we did to sellers, you do the same thing here. Lead comes in, goes into the CRM, you make sure you got your Boomtown website or whatever. There's so many out there right now. You make sure it's in your website. You make sure they're in your website so they're getting the emails about properties based on their search and all that stuff. A lot of us are putting them in that email. A lot of them are putting, us, putting them in that website and we are just literally forgetting about them. We're not even calling the people that are logging in the most, right? But a lead comes in, goes into your CRM, then goes into your website. Within a couple of minutes, if you set up your CRM right, a text message goes out, an email goes out, a voicemail drop goes out, right? Your assistant could do it. Your VA could do it. Anybody could really do it. Matter, matter of fact, you know, text message says, hey, I just saw you registered on my website. Is there any specific properties you're interested in? That's it. Email goes out, something similar. Voicemail goes out, hey, hey, Jason Morris here with XYZ Realty. I saw where you registered on my website. Want to give you a quick call, see if I could help you with any um, houses. We got a couple of good deals um, if you're looking for an investment property or a primary residence. Um, you know, one thing, one thing that uh, was really effective um, I was generating a lot of leads online for a while. And one thing that's really effective with my buyer's agents is we would leave messages and the message would say, we've got some really good deals that I'd be glad to share with you. Some of them are on MLS, but we've got some off-market deals too, right? And it wasn't that we really had that, that many off-market deals. Every now and then we'd get some, 
However, man, that 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 adding that little extra to the voicemail was a big difference in the amount of callbacks we got. So, but then they get added to a custom audience ad on Facebook. Maybe it's um top three things to look at if you're buying an HOA. You know, something like that. Some piece of information that goes out. And that's what seems to be most effective for agents right now is having that information that's going out, right? Okay, the day two, they get an email about lenders, important to getting pre-qualified. Day three, they get a text asking. But we go through, I mean, you guys have all seen, a lot of you guys have went through Keller Williams stuff, a lot of you guys went through Bold, a lot of you guys have seen Ben Kenny's 10 Days of Pain, I think it was, that uh, went around for a while, it was 10 Days of Follow-Up. Now, the thing is, when we were when we were doing that stuff years ago, when that stuff was coming out, when the whole 33 Touch Keller Williams thing was going on, Guys, we just didn't have the technology we have now, right? Pre-COVID, we didn't have the technology that we have now. You know, now, a lot of this stuff really, really makes sense. So it turns out, it turns out me and Larry Lee, we've been working on something, and a lot of this stuff we can automate for you guys. Um, it's uh, brand new. It's something we just started doing. We just got through some tests, and um, we... Uh, this is the first time we've mentioned it to anyone. And um, if it's something that you're interested in, um, looking at with us and us automating a lot of this process for you, um, leave a comment in the chat or leave a comment in the question or message me, and me or either Larry Lee once we end this, um, this webinar. We can automate a lot of that for you. Now, one of the things I promised you guys was how to build a farm to make $100,000 a year in commissions, right? And I feel like this is what a lot of you guys are here for, right? It's how to build a farm. Okay, so, um, so now a lot of this, um, a lot of this stuff, and I've got a couple questions here, I'll answer them in just a minute. If you guys are interested, and they are uh, in the program interest in working with me and Larry. We try to make it as affordable as we can, at least for the ones that are starting with us. Um, because like I said, this is the first webinar. So we got some limited space here. But this is the first time we've mentioned it. And a lot of this stuff we've already tested. We know it works. Um, it's working with agents all over the country already. They're doing this, but a lot of them don't have it automated or don't have it automated. And the CRM we're using is a custom CRM that, um, that we actually had. Um, had built and customized to do a lot of this stuff. Here's the last little bit. So, um, guys, $100,000 a year in commissions. So, you know, a lot of us don't have expires in our market right now. So we have to get creative on how we're going to find listings and how we're going to do stuff. And a lot of us, I mean, I'll tell you guys this for me personally, um, with my schedule, and stuff, my schedule that I can work, my schedule that I can't work, even with uh, daycare, afternoon people and stuff, you know, my time is a lot limited, right? It's a lot more limited than what it was. So I've looked at, man, I used to would take a listing anywhere in my MLS, right? I can't really do that anymore. Um, so farming is all of a sudden a viable, um, a viable solution to that, right? Now, First thing we need to do, is the, the program I'd recommend, how you get the data for this is Red X Geo Leads, right? And if, if you guys are interested in, in just getting the data, tell them I sent you, they'll waive all the setup fees and all that stuff. But the first thing we need to do is identify neighborhoods with a high turnover ratio, right? Neighborhoods, things are selling, okay? Now, a lot of this, we're looking at geographic areas that, um, that maybe it's not so important that we, um, Maybe it's not so important that we that we're the turnover is high as long as you know we're not driving an hour to a listing appointment, right? Um, so eight percent turnover ratio is on 150 neighborhoods, uh, 150 home neighborhood is basically an average of one listing a month, right? But we're not going to use eight percent um, because a lot of us don't really necessarily have that luxury of everything being high to turn over, right? So, um, so the, 
what we're going to use is 5% for the purpose of math. And you got to screenshot this if you want. Okay, so we identify 3,000 homes. Use GLEs, um, we might end up having to get four or 5,000 homes just to get all the data we need, but we want 3,000 homes worth of data, right? and we're gonna say a 5% turnover. Now, some of those areas might have a 10%, some of them might have a 3%, right? But 5% well, turnover, those 3,000 homes, are probably gonna have 150 listing chances a year, right? 150 homes are gonna sell, okay? Um, 150 chances. So how do we get, how do we get, a piece of those 150 chances, right? How do we get the opportunity? Okay. And you know, I've seen agents that are cold calling blindly. I've seen agents that are door knocking blindly. They just knock as many they can knock, dial as many they dial. And I've always felt like that was really an effective strategy. If agents would use a strategy, someone would say, you're going to circle prospect, circle prospect with a plan, right? Okay. So let's just say, what if we took we got that data we got that data we got emails for some of them phone numbers and that custom audience with facebook you can create with an email address or a phone number right it creates it based on um it basically picks the audience based on um what their account is associated with if it's an email address you've got that, that lines up with a certain account if it's a phone number that lines up with a certain account because you know you guys this is why Facebook asks you to verify your phone number regularly and they verify your email address, right? And then we go back and we do exactly what we talked about here, right? We send the community a text message. We send them an email. We do a voicemail drop to us. We create a custom audience on Facebook. Maybe we actually go out there and we do door knock, right? Door knock, you know, if we wanna do 3,000 homes a quarter, man, it's 90 days, you know, that really, I mean, it breaks down to not really that many houses, 35, 40 houses a day, roughly, on average. You know, that's manageable. That's manageable. But then on top of it, what if we, we do a branded open house? Now, you don't even have to do it. One thing I see where agents are failing with open houses when they're working on a strategy like this is they set up an open house. They have another agent do it, and then they allow that other agent to put their sign and their marketing material out there. What it should be is if you are the Jason Morris group and you're doing an open house in your in your farm area, and you know, you can always do open houses, you can borrow listings from other people in your office, right? This is one of the we should leverage our office as much as possible. Agents don't do that. Um any not anymore anyway, but we borrow a listing from our office. Um since we're doing the open house, it's the Jason Morris team or the Jason Morris group or whatever you call your your group, right? Our sign goes in the front. Maybe it's not me myself going out there, but you know any information we hand out has the Jason Morris team logo on it, right? Maybe we do a quarterly mailer to those three thousand three thousand homes. Maybe we door knock to it. We do go through. We use a dialer. We do some live calls. Maybe we do some YouTube videos, right? We do some YouTube videos. We do some blogs about them. Um, and next thing we know, probably two, three months down the road, when people do a search and, and Google, we've done a regular YouTube video in the neighborhoods, we've done a regular blog in the neighborhoods, um, two, three months down the road, um, dude, we're showing up. You're showing up when they do a Google search. They're seeing you, they're seeing you on their Facebook. They're getting your stuff in the mail, they're getting the phone calls from you, they're getting the text messages from you. I mean, dude, all of a sudden, you are the guy that everybody knows. And if we look at that follow-up, if we look at this follow-up thing right here, maybe they don't know you on contact number one, right? They don't know you on contact number one. Not everybody's going to like you anyway. You're going to get don't text me again. You're going to get some emails marked as fan. You're going to get some stuff like that, right? Well, we get to that seventh contact, which is maybe month two, month three. And all of a sudden, they knew who Jason Morris is. They knew who Larry Lee is, right? And then by the time we get three, four, five months down the road, we are the person that everybody knows, right? In those that 3,000 home farm area. Guys, this is a long-term strategy for consistent business. 
and it's one that and you know what the YouTube videos um, the YouTube videos man really it can just be a market update I mean literally it can just be a market update you sitting there sharing your screen for five minutes talking about the houses that just sold in the neighborhoods right just pulling them up pulling up the public view on your MLS going yeah this is a nice house it sold yeah it was listed for you know five hundred thousand sold for 475 you know sold in 300 days right maybe those are what your YouTube videos are maybe you do those market updates and you you text an email out that link uh, where you're talking about what just sold in the last 30 days right I mean we can get real creative with this but we can do it so that it's not difficult maybe the ads are the same thing it's the market update right so guys not only can we do that do automation right you follow up the listings that you already have right that listing that you you got the paperwork signed this afternoon how powerful and what kind of fan would it create if literally you listed the house today you put them in your crm you put it put it so that it follows up with listed properties. So you get an MLS tonight or you get an MLS in the morning, a uh, voicemail drop or text message goes out tomorrow, says, hey, your house just got listed. Hey, tomorrow it's gonna get syndicated to all these different websites. A day or two later, text goes out that says, hey, hey, Mr. Seller, just wanna let you know, your home's uh, searchable all over the internet. Just uh, go to Google and type in the address, right? And you create something like that and then literally, you take and every week every two weeks based on the number of showings instead of you following up with them and doing that weekly call trying to price reduce them you could you could automate your price reduction hey mr seller based on the number of showings we've had in the last two weeks please give me a call and let's talk about um talk about your your house and how we could get more interest right what if you done that and automatically automated for you and you didn't even have to pick up the phone and then they called you and they're like, hey, Jason, I got your text. Do you want to talk about how we get more stuff? And you say, yeah, you know what, Mr. Seller, I was thinking about this. We've only had two showings in the last two weeks. We really needed about seven or eight to get a contract. Um, I was thinking probably the thing we need to do is adjust the price. So what do you think? And they said, oh, well, how much are we talking? And then you go in for a price section. Maybe you just create a script and you just use a script where you automatically ask for $5,000, right? And literally you start automating it. So they're calling you asking, asking about a price reduction. Did you could do it with buyers? You could do it with buyers that are closing on Monday. You set it up, you just put them in there on Monday, you start the, an automation, it tells them what the electric companies are, you send out all that stuff to them, and then literally you're down the road six months, a year from now you're still contacting them, still send an email, a text message or voicemail that just says, hey, Jason Morris here, thought I'd touch base with you, see how you're enjoying your new home. I was wondering if you knew anybody, um, knew anybody looking to buy a sell, seller house, right? Dude, you can follow up. That. Dude, one thing, one thing, I haven't done this, but I've thought about this a lot, and I think it'd be like, like super powerful, is you know what, man, we all keep talking about, we all keep talking about, um, Referral partners. I've seen this, God, I don't know how many times. I don't have agents for me on Facebook, and then I send them a message going, hey, thanks for the friend request. Um, how can I help you? <laughs> what made you decide to reach out? That's my favorite thing to send them to say. Oh, well, I thought that maybe we could be referral partners. Hey, well, that's great. And then we never talk again. We literally never talk again, right? But what if we did have those agents that, um, are in those specific markets, man, that are big agents that maybe they're in a feeder market to yours, right? There's a lot of people moving from, we have uh, seven markets that feed into Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, or seven states that feed into Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. What if I had, you know, 100 agents set up on that once a month? They all got, you know, an email from me or something, just an update on the Myrtle Beach market, and I'm um, just something saying, hey, Hey, you know, I pay for referrals, guys. Hey, remember me if you got somebody looking to buy here. We create a tremendous referral business just from there. And networking uses information, holiday messages, of course. And um, anyway, guys, I got some time here for some questions. I'm happy to answer. We already got some here. So, Sherry, how much is your system? Okay, so, um, so we've got a good bit of automated uh, through text. 
the text, the email, the voicemail drops. We've got a lot of that automated in a way that you can export and then import into Facebook. Um, and the first people we're willing to help with ads and stuff with Facebook is part of this. Um, as far as we're offering, we're asking uh, $1.99 a month. Um, Sally asked, how would you re-engage old leads? You know what, guys? That's a tremendous opportunity. Um, that's a tremendous opportunity to re-engage with those old leads, right? One thing that I've talked about in the past, and I've talked about this in my training and stuff, is if you want to fill your pipeline up, you go get the last 12, 24 months of expired, right? You can literally take that last 24 months of expired, um, upload them into a CRM, upload them into a CRM, and you could um, you could send you could send an email if you have it. You send an email, a text message, a voicemail drop, and then do the Facebook ads literally all at one time, and then work with the people that raise their hand. Call the people that raise your hand. Now, um, what I've talked about in the past is calling through that thousand leads, calling through that fifteen hundred leads, however many you have, and typically making calls to them, you'll get you'll get about one to two percent the first time you call through, and then you'll get one to two percent the second time when you call through all the people that you didn't get in touch with, right? So if you got a thousand leads, you'll end up with about fifteen to twenty the first time that are wanting to do something that's still on the house. Then, then when you call through the other ones, you'll probably get another 10. So you could fill your pipeline. Really, you could fill your pipeline with 20, 25. So if you done it, had an integrated strategy, plus you made those calls, man, that'd be super powerful. Like super powerful. Um, Michael, um, the CRM that we're um, we're doing is is a custom CRM that um, that Larry actually designed initially for the mortgage industry. And um, how do you get around the do not call list? Um, honestly, I think, well, Red is gonna weed those out. Do not call list. Um, use your own discretion, use your research. With it, I would just call everybody, right? Do not call list is really funky when you start really, um, really looking at who's on it, who's not on it, um, how a number never drops off of that. That number could have went through five people already um since the original person registered it and there's never a time where it drops off and there's never a time where it actually needs to be re-registered so the do not call list is really funky your number could be on it if you go get a new number today your number might be on it and you don't even know right sally yes I mean, they keep me busy i don't know if you guys have heard them in the background but man um uh toy story is uh sounds real excited downstairs um and um and this is actually where i'm reading this from is actually on the zoom call i've got questions so the cost is 199 dollars a month um Rob, you know what there is guys there is guys we went through the whole system today really we went through what you need to do and what the system is you guys could sit there and you could sit there and write all the text messages. You could write all the emails. You could design your own follow-up system. You could try to figure out ads by yourself. You could do it. Um, and you could, there's probably CRMs that you could do it, you know? Um, and um, yeah, you could. Um, you could probably find systems that are, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, however, yeah, you could could sit there and do every single one of these yourself and um and figure it all out and do it yourself yeah i've given you the system so keith out how can you determine how many houses in a neighborhood area um well tax records is one way um where i think that um where i think you should do it or where i think you should look is I think you should get geo leads, right? And um, I think you should use geo leads, map out a certain area. And um, you know what's real weird is, is Zoom updated and there's not a chat on it for some reason. And I don't really know why that is. So I'd further be a chat, that'd be a lot more engaging. But if you guys have questions, ask, ask them in the um, 
Q&A box, and I'm happy to answer these things for you. And um, so, but Keith, what I would do is pull up geo leads. I would look for an area, um, maybe you pick an address, and you do a radius around it, and that's what I do. And honestly, guys, if you really want to make things really easy and make your life a lot simple, excuse me, do that radius based on your home address and pull up like three miles of your home address. It lives in a real dense area, like there's a lot of neighborhoods where I live. Um, honestly, I could probably I could pull up you know three miles and probably have um, have a lot of that area for me for myself, you know. Um, and with Geo Leads Plus, um, with Geo Leads Plus, you get the emails and all that stuff. And like I said, tell them I sent you in a wave set up calls and everything. Um, and uh, what I think about chewing tobacco, um, do you, you know what, man? I'm from uh, I'm from here in the South. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. I'm not opposed to chewing tobacco. Um, I get bit by a spider a couple of weeks ago, man. The first thing I did was I put chewing tobacco on it. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bonus for you guys. Um, is this replacement for follow-up balls? Uh, yes, this would replace follow balls without a doubt. Um, um, there's not a chat. I don't like I said. I don't really know why there's not a chat on here. Um, but what other questions you guys have? <laughs> so, so yes, um, you would get the data. You would you would get the data from Red X, right? You get the data from Red X, and uh, or that's where I'd recommend. There may be some other place to get it from, and um, but that's where I would get it from. And Matt, you know what Matt's talking about? Real Geeks. Um, you know what Real Geeks is great. Well, Real Geeks seems to uh, show up. I know some agents using Real Geeks, and it seems to be very um, search and friendly, and it seems. Seems to be a great seems to be a great product for for working those buyer leads. So, um, however, you know, like a lot of things, um, a lot of agents I see them use a site like Real Geeks um, or Boomtown or there's a bunch of them now that are very very similar. And they literally they put their buyer lead in there and they let the system work it. And they don't actually engage them. If you engage them on top of the system. Um, and work so yeah Matthew you got 1800 buyer leads I guarantee you um if you take those buyer leads and you uploaded them and you sent them you did voicemail drops to them you did um you did the uh emails out to them you done um text messages out to them around Facebook ad man you could convert more of those there's probably some people in there uh Rob um, hey, do you ever buy buyer leads or you recommend buy leads or would you recommend that? I call it almost uh, every day about services, sell agents, the leads, the legit or scams. Dude, I can't speak for a lot of them, man. Some of these things are honestly they're taking advantage of agents and they're taking agents' money. I mean, um, you know, in the past, if you guys have been following me for a while, you've probably have seen um I've only recommended a couple lead sources. Red X has been constant. Um the reason I recommend them over like um Vulcan 7 and other places is Red X mines their own data. A lot of these services are repurchasing data. So everybody's repurchasing that data gets the exact same data. Red X get a little bit different data, but a lot of these services will only buy and sell data that they know is 100 percent accurate, right? Which is great, which is great because you're only going to call numbers that are great if you're using some of these services. However, Red X mining their own data that give you extra, right? They're not giving you only the 100% ones. Maybe they've got got phone numbers that, you know, however this algorithm works, man, I'm not privy to that whole knowledge, but I'm sure it scores um, phone numbers. I'm sure it scores emails in some way or another. And maybe you're not only getting the 100% ones, but you're getting, you know, the ones that are only scoring 75% or 60%, right? Um, and they're searching databases. So it's a mining sort of thing. It's not somebody like going and opting in. Um, ZBuyer, the reason I did like ZBuyer, and this would be even very powerful to use with ZBuyer, um, ZBuyer ran a, a network of websites where people were basically um, 
popping in um, their stuff going, hey, I got a house that I have to sell. And um, so, I mean, I would just look at it. There's a, there's a company out there doing some probate leads, I think it's pretty good. Um, there's some pre-foreclosure lead companies out there that are really good. Red X offers some pre-foreclosure leads. Um, and um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I would just kind of vet each one individually. I don't want to speak for some of them because you know what, man, there's so much, there's so many lead sources and technology coming out. It's hard to keep up with it all, really. Matthew, um, I could export those leads and upload them. Yes, you could. Um, uh, Matthew, I've also recently purchased a list of likely to sell leads from share group, 3,800 leads. Is there a limitation on the amount of leads that can be in the database? Um, man, that is, a, that is a great question for Larry Lee. If you want to send him a message through Facebook, I'm sure he'd be glad to answer that for you. For you. Um, there's probably some ways that we could pare down that data and try to sift through it. Um, but I would ask, Larry would be a good person to ask that. And actually, how would you upload 3,800 leads from the chart? That's a really good question. What other questions do you guys have? <laughs> um, let's see. PTP stream. I'm I'm not sure what that is. Um, no, no, this isn't pre-recorded. This is live right here. This right here is real live that you guys are listening to. Um, if you don't know about Exacto, I don't know anything about that. Do you use AI in any way? Um, no, I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff uh, using AI, and I'm not saying that I won't use it in the future. Um, I've seen some amazing things, man. Amazing, amazing things. Um, but I don't really, um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I had somebody approach me and talk to me about um, building out a coaching program using AI. And to be honest with you, I don't feel like, well, like questions you guys are answer, asking me even during this, I don't feel like, I mean, AI might can answer them better than me, right? But I'm answering them from a certain level of experience. And I hate that agent going, hey, I've been in the business almost 20 years. But one thing that comes with being in the business almost 20 years as a, as a producing agent um, in a producing professional in the real estate business is that you do see certain patterns. You see certain patterns in the market. And you look at how do you think the market can respond based on experience, right? Um, and because um, I mean, man, there's some there's some young agents out there that they're they're just so technology smart, man. Um, that um, and me meanwhile, some of us that have been in the, more, in, the in the real estate industry, we have tremendous amounts of experience that they can benefit from. You know, we have trouble using our new cell phone, right? Um, but um, you know, so I'm not sure if AI can, um, Luigi put, uh, AI can be absolutely trained to answer questions on your behalf. I think you could do it on a basic level, but I think some of the more in-depth answers, um, I know it could give an answer, but I'm not sure it could give it the answer that I would give, if that makes sense, you know? Do I think rates will hit 8%? I do. Um, man, they hit 7%. I mean, I'll tell you guys, 2000. Eight when rates hit six and three quarter, that's when the market started um, started uh, going down. And if we see, dude, if we see a combination of things, I mean, one thing that's going to happen, one thing that's going to happen is all of a sudden rents are going to be cheaper than um, than mortgages, and we'll see people struggling with mortgages walking away to rent the same house down the street for three hundred dollars less a month. We'll we'll probably see that and um i think it's it's mind-blowing to me airbnb right now the amount of inventory that is actually on airbnb is unreal and it's in so many markets and these people you know i kick myself that i didn't take more advantage of the airbnb stuff but if we could figure out a way to target airbnb um inventory it would be um 
a tremendous lead for us, I think, over the next 12, 24 months. And if we see if we see 25% of that Airbnb inventory um, come on the market, dude, how much would that change the market? You know what I mean? Um, in a lot of markets, in Airbnb, um, Airbnb uh, revenues are down. Man, there's one thing I'd like to show some markets where Airbnb revenue was down 65%. And the same thing said that um, Airbnb inventory was down, um, was down, uh, our Airbnb revenue was down 45%. Um, it was down 45% in uh, my market. And I believe it because you know what? I got friends with the Airbnb right now talking about they've got empty weeks in July, which is, dude, usually July, everything's full here. And they're willing to offer deals on it. You know, so they're just not getting the bookings. And some of these, some of these people are smart people that really get out there and hustle and they're not just waiting on the system to, to book their place. Um, do I have a website dealing everything that your system's offering automate? Um, you know, get in touch with Larry Lee and Larry can uh, get you all that information. And um, this system, like it, like I said, this is brand new. Um, this is the first time we've even mentioned it anywhere. It's literally on this webinar. And, um, and there's going to be some things right now that it probably doesn't automate that will automate in the future, right? Larry Lee, how can we contact Larry Lee? Um, Larry is on Facebook. He's in the group Real Estate Agents that really work. If you go there, that's probably the easiest place um, to be able to get in touch with him. Uh, let's see. Larry should be on here. Yeah, this is really live. Yeah. Huh, Larry, I can't chat here. Larry, how do you want me to um, tell him to get in touch with you? I don't know why that is. I tell you what, let me make Larry the host. Let me make Larry the host. Let's see, let me load you to panelist. Okay, we got Larry on here now. Okay, so uh, you can't see my video because it said host has stopped it, but you don't need to see my video. Uh, yeah, now I can see everything. Thank you for that. Uh, for some reason, I was like a ghost. Like, I I can see the call, but I can't chat or DM. I don't know who how many participants. So the best way to reach out to me is through Facebook uh, Messenger. But if you want to call me, I'm going to drop my number in the chats. Uh, 832-606-2193. Jason, is it okay if I go ahead and... Um, Drop the link for the people to sign up if they're interested in hearing more. Uh, yeah, actually, actually, that'd be great. Um, said though, I just I'm not a hundred percent sure. Oh, okay, we got a chat now. So, yeah, I, um, I can chat now, actually, yes. Larry, there we go. Yeah, go ahead and drop the link there. Okay, uh, someone says say the number slowly: eight three two six zero six. 2193, but I also put it in the chat. 832 606 2193. If you're struggling to find me that way, you can always go to larrylee.com. That's my link tree. So it gives like my cell number, my email, everything. Larrylee.com, L A R R Y L E.com. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to where you can sign up if you're interested in learning about the system uh so it is uh it is a crm that i've been using and 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 uh, providing for uh, referral partners and clients that are uh tested try and true but we are building out uh, extra campaigns and approaches for the uh sellers uh, basically what jason uh, explored and talked about today and we're going to build content and training around that and the idea is to eventually uh, handle everything that he talked about meaning uh, helping you either generate leads or using the leads that you have to create a target 
audience or custom audience to Facebook or other marketing uh, platforms. Uh, the idea is to uh, learn and, and, and build that and perfect it together. And then once we do that, then we'll actually probably start to charge for that service. But for the people who uh, join early, we're going to have like a sort of like a, almost like a, a mastermind, I guess is the word you'd call it, or a, a hive mind or just a group uh, where we're going to figure it all out together. But uh, the link I'm sending you is going to be for people who want to go ahead and uh, implement the follow-up to their current leads, meaning people they already have in their database, uh, people that they, uh, you know, maybe that you collected over the years, maybe you got them from Red X, maybe you just did a really good job of, of following up on expires and Fizbos and they just didn't work with you. Uh, so you want to re-engage with them. So I'm going to put that link in the chat right now. Um, there's nothing to get charged or anything right now. It's just joining and then you they'll ask you a few questions and then you just got to put, uh, you know, I'm interested in the uh, selling automation system. And whenever we do uh, launch the platform for 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 uh, signing up, then we'll let you know, and then you can uh, effectively subscribe there. But for now, we're just building the list of people who are interested. So that's the link there. Uh, if you don't get the link, or you don't, you can't click it, or you can't see it because maybe you're on your phone, you can always reach out to me. Again, eight three two six zero six two one nine three. I put the phone number in the chat, but also. Um, oh, you know what? It says host and panel. So I get, I'm hoping all you guys, participants, can see it because it says it's sending to just host and panelists. Uh, so I'm not sure you guys see that, but I put it in the webinar chat. Um, now, there was a few questions that were asked, but before I answer some of the questions, because I joined just now, so I don't see any of the questions. It's, it's like a brand new slate for me. But I do want to kind of break down the CRM. There's a lot of CRMs out there that would do what we talk about, but they're there's a lot more to them. It's uh, uh, maybe really robust, and I actually consider them convoluted. There's a lot of extra stuff that's not necessary to do what Jason is uh, coaching you guys to do, which is basically just touch them, right? We just want to touch these people, uh, get them reengaged. So, um, you know, I, again, I have a lot of clients that were uh, loan officers and real estate agents, and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have experienced this, but once you get into a CRM that's a little too complicated, or hard to build, you just don't want to use it. You don't want to uh, engage with it. You don't even want to attempt to put the work in to build it out. Uh, the, so the CRM that we uh, have been developing is very simple. It's very easy to uh, customize and implement and use. In fact, it's so easy that people will actually mess it up by by not controlling like the upload. So for instance, uh, we had a client that uploaded 10,000 leads and literally his response was so, uh, so frequent that he had to just basically change phone numbers because he got too many calls or either he changed phone numbers or he turned off his phone whatever but he, he basically said i messed up i uploaded my entire database and or my, my assistant did is what he said um and and, and he, he he got screwed because it was so it was such a, a good response rate so we'll, we'll train you on, on how to avoid that problem but it's very easy to use uh i I've built out all sorts of coaching content and walkthroughs on how to use it, how to set it up, how to upload your leads. If uh, we actually can help you do that. In fact, that's something I'm offering uh, for the early adopters because we do want people to, uh, from the gates, start getting some sort of ROI because we want uh, testimonials. We want uh, people to see results right away so uh, we can sort of build a, a reputation, uh, a brand, and, 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 and a proof of concept, right? So we're willing to kind of... Um, go the extra mile to try to get you guys going uh, for the early adopters, right? Um, so again, the CRM, the reason why I use it is because it's very easy and it's, I can tr train and teach pretty much any loan officer or any real estate agent to use it. Because again, we, we don't, we're not uh, computer programmers, right? For the most, we're not engineers. So we need something that's easy to use uh, and, and, and easy to, to implement. And that's why we, we built this system. Uh, because for the most part, we're not trying to uh, change the world with our CRM. We're just trying to touch people with emails, text messages, and voice drops, right? That's all we're trying to do uh, so that we can, again, like Jason said, uh, 
Uh, yeah, we're trying to make money with it. Well, we're trying to make money with it. We're, yeah. we're really just trying to get in front of it, right? And that's what a lot of loan officers and real estate agents fail to do in general. They fail to do that right now, like with their database and their leads. They just, they just, they don't bother with it or they just don't have the bandwidth to do it manually. So this kind of solves the problem. Um, so, you know, I will also explain real quickly so I can pass it back to Jason. Why the CRM exists is because I did do lead generation uh, funnels and ads for clients. Uh, I taught it, I coached it for years. And a lot of my clients were actually succeeding in generating leads, but they weren't converting them. So they're like, Larry, I'm getting leads, but they suck, right? Well, in reality, it's because they just had a crappy follow-up system, right? They didn't have a plan or they didn't have, they were getting leads, but then they weren't managing them correctly. So I, I had to figure out a solution to help my clients who are generating leads, but not doing the follow-up. So that's what this system is built for to sort of just kind of bridge the gap between getting, getting leads and then what do you do with the leads? Uh, so uh, I had to basically find a system that was really easy to use that anyone can, can employ. And again, I have walkthrough videos and such already built out. Uh, Andrew's asking how much money was it? I, I, I don't know what, the, what he's asking, but if you're asking how much is it going to uh, cost, uh, the introductory cost is $199, $199 a month is what we're starting off with. And uh, as part of that, whoever joins in the beginning, again, we're going to be developing like the lead generation systems. We're going to be developing uh, how to uh, acquire leads, how to build follow-up systems and such. And uh, we're going to do that together basically as sort of a project. Uh, and once we perfect it, then we're going to start charging for it. So the early adopters won't have to pay for it because they'll be learning with us and we'll be building them out. Uh, literally, it's almost like um, we need beta, beta testers, right? Uh, so we'll be building this out stuff out for free for the people who are already signed up for the subscription for the follow-up. And then again, once Jason and I figure that we have a system that we can confidently uh, sell in the open market, then it will go from people who are involved in it from the free and people who join will have to actually pay for that service. So that'll be an addition to the one in nine uh, monthly subscription. Um, oh, sorry, Julie. Uh, hold on one second. Is that better? Can you guys hear me better? Sorry if, sorry if you don't hear me before. The reason why uh, I had that labeled, uh, I lowered because I had a kid in the background and he was making a lot of noise, kind of like with Jason, so I had to lower the gain. So sorry about that. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat real quickly what I was saying. Um, it's one ninety nine a month for the CRM. Uh, we're going to, as a team, whoever is a part of this, uh, we're going to develop lead generation systems. We're going to perfect it. We're going to do A-B testing. We're going to make sure the ads work and everything. Uh, and it's all going to be free because we're all just kind of doing research and development. So whoever's involved in the, uh, the system that we're uh, offering now is going to be a part of that. And then once we believe Jason and I have perfected it, you know, meaning we're, we, we believe we can go to the open market with it, then we're going to start charging for that service as well. Uh, so anyone who joins uh, right now using the, just the CRM to follow up with your aged leads or your current leads that you're generating right now yourself, you're, you're going to have the opportunity to be a part of that uh, research and development team. And like I said, beta testing, uh, no charge whatsoever. And then once we again go live, then we'll start charging it. So then people would have to pay for, uh, pay for that, uh, I guess, uh, system that we would offer. Uh, but yeah, so 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 that's the motivation. That's the uh, what do you want to call it? Um, the the fear of loss. Why you should sign up today? Uh, it's not because we have limited spots. That's not true. It's not because you know we can't sell you know a certain amount of seats or whatever. No, it's not true. It's just that whoever is willing to sign up today with us and, and, and let us help you with your current database. We're also going to together learn how to develop new business. Uh, and, and then once we, again, perfect that, then we'll start charging for it. Um, so initial charge is 199 a month, Matthew. Uh, uh, it's a subscription that you're, 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 you're uh, subscribing to, uh, meaning you're, you're paying to have access to the service. It's a continuing service. 
you know, because obviously uh, text messages, emails, and, and, and voicemails cost money. So if you're doing follow up with your database and you're constantly following up with them, because I actually have I actually have campaigns that we can build out to 600 days. So you can follow up with your leads for uh, effectively a, a more more than a year and a half, right? So there's constant cost being incurred. So yes, it's a it's a hundred ninety dollars a month. Uh, you're going to get the service, but also in addition to that, you'll get our coaching, you'll get um, our content, but also access to us as we uh, work together to develop an ROI for everybody involved. So our our goal is for everyone who does this to literally get actionable uh, tools that they can receive immediate results because if that happens, then we have proof of concept, like I said, and we can uh, build this uh, this group into a larger organization, a larger, uh, you know, like I said, hive money, right? Uh, Matthew's asking the future charge for the follow up system. So the follow up system is what we are offering right now. Uh, Nine ninety nine a month for a CRM that's designed to literally just touch your database because, like Jason was saying, most people don't go past one or two calls, right? Uh, and the whole point of this. Uh, webinar is how do you get more listings without making calls the idea is to automate everything right the idea is to schedule everything the idea is to build out a system that does it for you on autopilot so that you don't have to do it yourself right so that's what we're offering right now is the ability to build that for you customized to you and you can upload your current database or if you have lead generation systems right now that are currently developing leads you can connect it to it or we can figure out a way to make sure it's uploaded and therefore you make the first second maybe third calls but then the next 15 20 30 even 100 touches can be automated right that would be the service we're offering right now at 99 199 a month but we want to cover all bases so another part of what jason was presenting is we're going to uh, teach you how to upload uh, custom audiences to Facebook. We're going to teach you how to get develop more leads. We're going to do this together. Uh, and we're doing this again, sort of like a beta test, uh, sort of like a, a, a prototype type environment. And then once we perfect that as a team, and you know, you, you, you're not required to be a part of it it's just you have you have access to that right you have access to the discussions and and and, and sharing uh you know what people are doing and what's working what's not working eventually we're going to again perfect it to where we believe that anyone who adopts this system will generate leads literally without question and therefore that's something we would actually end up starting to sell as a package right um, so basically we're going to do that, but we're not going to do it right now. Cause again, we haven't even, uh, really perfected it yet. So we're allowing the people who are early adopters for our system. Basically you're getting part a, we're going to develop part B and part C you're getting part a right now. And then once we perfect part B, then you'll have access to that already because you've been part of the development, of it. but then the people who join after it developed that will be paid for part a and part b and then once we get to part c same thing right uh, so hopefully that kind of makes sense um no problem matthew i really appreciate that thanks for the questions um so i think i don't know i don't know if there's any other question i think there was another question about how do we uh extract our leads to uh, upload a custom audience or whatever that's definitely another conversations because it's, it's a pretty um in-depth process but there's a way you can go into facebook and upload a CSV or an audience, right? Uh, so yeah. it's it's one of those things where like it's a it's an option that Facebook offers, uh, and by doing that, you can create custom audiences. Saying you know, I want people that are similar to this person, uh, and uh, I, I haven't done it in a while, but it does it maybe even a chance to upload the lead and and uh, upload your database, and those people are the people that they're actually going to target, right? So. Uh, and, yes. and that's what you can do. You can target them. You can create a custom audience based on a phone number or their email address. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, phone number, email address, and hopefully what you end up with, um, with the data that you have, is you either have an email address that is associated with a Facebook account or a phone number that's associated with a Facebook account. And that's how you end up getting in front of that person. So maybe they never answer the phone, but, you know, they're seeing your ads. 
and those ads because you're not pulling from Facebook database those views are a lot cheaper than say if we went out here and just created a random audience and yes. um, ran ran ads again yeah so um, I don't know uh, not everyone is on the call uh, that that was initially here um, I think Julian was commenting on the fact that he can hear me can you guys hear me okay now is that is that sounding okay sorry about that cool man so i think we answered all the questions i uh, appreciate you getting on the call with me larry um yeah hopefully there's a got... lot of good stuff on here that we uh covered yeah yeah zooms did a little update and it's um i'm gonna i tell you what i'm gonna stop the recording right here yep. um but zooms did a um you know what i made you host maybe you have to stop the recording oh you know what yeah let, man. Me, let me make you host again okay yeah. uh, i'm making you host there you go but um, yeah, you know what? I hope there was um, I hope there was some stuff that I uh, everybody learned. I enjoyed sharing it. Um, a lot of this has been developed through personal personal experience, trial and error with myself. Um, a lot of data Red X gave me a lot of data. A lot of searching out these agents are doing this on a bigger scale level, and um, you know it's uh, it's exciting times, man. It's exciting times that um think that we have the tools to automate a lot of the sales process now that we just we just did not have these two years ago or they're definitely we're not as advanced as they are right now so um so anyway thank you guys for being on the call and thank you larry for um uh, coming in and answering some questions and stuff for me and uh hey guys and i'll see you guys soon have a great day thanks guys see you later